and this sort of medium. Now, the people at that meeting, it's to do with austerity. It's really important that the people there were as genuine as everybody here. They, they had their passions. It was slightly wrong, in the wrong direction, but when they came in, they just uh, shook hands and smiled. But when you come in, you're hugging each other, you're laughing, you're just totally different attitudes to life. And we're talking about just the serious problems. If they knew what we knew, or know, they would be the same. Now there was about 130, 140 people there in a locked room. And I thought, I'm going to get them and I'm going to waken them all up. I told them about uh, Sue, my wife, and myself, the eviction. I told them about the, the criminality with the, the banks, the solicitors, and the courts. There was about two in the whole audience that eyes actually opened. But the majority, now I think there's two types of sleepers out there. We, we all can call them sleepers. These people don't know what's happening. Well, these people, were not just asleep, they were sedated. <laughs> they, they, honestly, they glazed over when I started telling them about, I did it very gently, I didn't force it upon them, telling them about uh, they're not really, uh, when they enter court, they're not treated as a human being, they're treated as a corporation and as a person. And I went into other different things. I did it very gently, I didn't give them a good shaving. But the, I could hear almost crickets at the back because it, they went dead silent and they did glaze over. Um, they had questions to ask. Only three people asked questions. The audience, or the people here, stood up and they didn't want to ask questions. They gave a political opinion. And they were asked to ask questions three at a time. There's only three questions out of playing. 15, 20 people. So the difference trying to wake people up, I think now it's got to be on a one-to-one -one basis because you can't wake up a lot of people all at the same time. I was quite shocked. I lay in bed thinking, finding the reaction. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. It, 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 it withdrawn. They're so programmed. Yeah. Uh, another suggestion we would say, if you're showing, let's say, a DVD or something off the internet, get yourself a cable, plug it into the television, because the condition to believe things that's on the television, not on your lap laptop. Play it in, and see if that makes any difference to people. But trying to wake up a lot of people all at the same time. But there's one thing they did have, they were organized. They, they were giving out these type, these all glossy, I printed this one off, all glossy things like this. All handed out, and there's lots of little leaflets going out. Well, there's no leaflets out here. If I was there and had a pile of these, I could have maybe given it to them and they'd go away and read it afterwards. I think maybe uh, response or beat the bailiffs should think about that. If there's any need, you just give them out to those that's not away. There's something that we've been talking about is this uh, Nice Treaty. And my wife Sue, she bangs on about this all the time because it's really important. <coughs> well, there was a Baroness at the meeting and I talked to her about it. There was a TUC chap. I said to the Baroness, what do you know about the Nice Treaty? What are you prepared to do about it? She's, she's a Labour peer. Never heard of it. <laughs> now everyone in this room, I take it, has heard of the news And then the TUC, well, I spoke to him, and he hadn't heard about it. I said, do you realise all these people here, if the Nice Treaty goes through, you can all go to be classed as terrorists. And if you go against the government, you're going to be terrorists. I didn't know that. You're going to be guilty until you prove yourself innocent, unlike what we've got nowadays. Well, <laughs> but that's, that's a theory of it. That, that's a theory of it. 
Or if you if you break a law in this country that you can be charged for, let's say, in Lithuania, those police over there can come over and arrest you mm -hmm. and take you back. I didn't know that. I said, well, look into it. You only got what three weeks left <laughs> to do do something about it. These these people are totally focused at changing the system by demonstrating. And I was saying this chap here, I can only think the phone tax. That's the only thing that a demonstration changed anything. Everything else, even a million people. Even a million people marching in London never changed anything. It's down to us to change it by going to the root of the, the problem. And that's the banks and the judiciary. So I thought I'd throw that in just to tell you the difference between an organised meeting and what we've got. It, this is wonderful. People are smiling and, uh, and happy, and they were. They, they just want to get rhetoric out, and it, it means nothing. Oh, you've got some leaflets. Okay. I, got, um, I got the Bradbury and the Quiet Warmers. Okay. I got some. TGI people. I'm a TGI people. I'll take all that back then. Okay. So I, I thought I'd throw that in before we get started. Now, uh, in the meeting uh, that I could have, uh, asked, I said that we were going to have a talk about bailiffs and how they, uh, they deal with the public when they come along to steal either their goods or their home because uh, I think it was Dave Twitcher. He was quite shocked. He, he, really, he, he was frightened, he said. It's understandable. They stole uh, a family's home in Kent. And the family didn't know how to deal with it. And the people there that was defending the home knew nothing either. The police just lifted the gate and walked in and pushed everybody out of the way and took the property. So I think it's important, and it's never been done, as far as I know, on uh, being filmed, how to deal with a bailiff, or just the basics, because response, absolutely brilliant, and they've done fantastic work. There's not many here of them to do today, but, but there is, yes. Um, but it is important how to defend against the bailiffs and the police. So, is there anybody here that that would, would play the innocent homeowner or who's got property to steal that would come forward and say, "I'll be, I'll, I'll, I'll be the, the victim." Where's me? All right. <laughs> Second, oh, he's got experience. <laughs> <laughs> I've got other things to deal with, <laughs> uh, and uh, two people that's going to be the bailiffs that know the the basic stupidity of them. Can we bring Young Collins to be the bailiff? So we've got one. Okay. So it's just a little bit of role play, and hopefully it'll be educational for people. People put these things up. Uh, all the documents. And they read them, unless you actually know what the documents mean and how, how it affects people, it's just reading words. Mm. But in action, when they come from, I, I can speak from experience and so can Guy, when they come along to steal your home, it's, mm. it's a different matter than reading words in the paper. Yeah, they, want to, they want to make you feel powerless, that's why. Wesley has got absolute cracking experience. In fact, <laughs> the bailiffs run a mile, and I don't blame them, because he knows, knows his stuff. Um, so, you know more than the, the bailiffs, so I don't know if you can actually video bail them, because they don't look so all. So, if, uh, uh, right, it's just a bit of role play. I mean, yeah, well, you know, do it the other way around. I mean, if Wesley's the victim, he'll explain to people how, yeah, yeah. how to answer it. I mean, I'm, I'm not I'm not putting you off the job, mate. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I think that's the way to do it, isn't it? The thing is, guy, he, he came straight up to me and said, I'd like to be a victim, he said. Well, <laughs> and he puts, it all over the, he puts it all over the internet. Yeah. Come and get me. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, uh, Last night, somebody put up on Facebook a, a PDF with a list of questions 
to ask a bailiff. Mm. Now I personally have no printer facilities. Have you got any printed copies of that? Not as yet, mm. but I'll put it up on the internet so you can print it out afterwards. Then. Don't have a printer. <laughs> I'm joking. Right. I'm joking. I'm giving the skin manager to do it. That's right. right. If I've got yes, I do have a copy. On, uh, I'll give that to you because I'm pretty Thank before you. coming here. See, my experience is just the bailers <coughs> attacking my family and myself. Um, I've been learning the court and uh, attacking the banks. And Wesley's got the real experience of these criminals coming in to steal something. So, so if you give Wesley a, a clap. Yeah. <laughs> You like about here and sorry to rope you in. Sorry to rope you in. Alright, you you have been that. So what are they coming to steal from you today? Uh, asset grab whatever assets you've got in your name. Um, we'll try and take your assets. Right. So what they got? What they use trickery. I'm more the debt, debt side of it. Under mortgage stuff. Where they're doing repossessions, but. The only way to stop bailiffs coming to do a repossession is, is you need to, is people coming together. Mm -hmm. If there's only a couple of you, we've been doing it for years, if there's only like five or six of you, you can beat the bailiffs off, but the police always back the bailiffs. Yeah. So I'm more focused on the debt side of it where people are in debt and they're you know, fighting debts of parking fines and stuff like that. So your first protocol you want to get is a letter from the bailiff. They give you notice that they're going to come. Uh, within 10, I can't see everyone with glasses. Yeah, it's only Mickley. <laughs> 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 Notice. Right. Uh, you know, anyway. Well, you know, we get a, a notice, and it's just a notice to pay. So there's no, re there's nothing really going on. It's just a piece of paper. Now they normally send it in red. So when you get get a red, you're all been programmed to feel the gut in that stomach to go. I must pay. I've got to go and pay. I'll lend the money, borrow the money, I'll do whatever. You don't have to pay anything because they're just crooks trying to you know, extort, extort money from them. That's all they are, crooks. So the first thing, once somebody calls, now for some reason they won't knock on my door, I don't know why. They do a ballet dance, they do it. Want, so I've got them all on camera and they won't knock on my door. They'll just go and run. So I'm, but I ring them up and just say, I believe you've just been on my property, you know. What, what are you doing trespassing? Did you read me on this? And they say, yeah, but you know, this is well, does it not apply to you? I said, yeah, but we didn't knock on. So you, you put a notice out? Yeah, it's yeah. a notice of implied right, removal, implied right to have access, which oh. stops anybody coming on your property. Okay. Um, if you do get somebody knocking, and somebody knocks on your door, and they're asking you who you are, alarm bells will start ringing straight away, because they're asking for information, but they're knocking for you. They know who you are. So don't give them any details. You're not obliged to give anybody details. Um, and then they'll trip you. There's certain tactics they use, which is, can I use your tile? Or, or can I use your phone so I can get you a deduction in what you wrote? Right. So they, they gain entry. Foot in the door? Yeah, well no, they're not supposed to use any sort of force whatsoever. So a foot in the door, they're breaking the law. Um, the next trick is, if they find that they can't, you're not consenting for them to come into the property, um, the first trick they'll do is removal team. They'll have to get on the phone and pretend the removal team's on the way to come and remove the goods. Mm -hmm. Most people buy then, okay, it's just fear. The next line they use is locksmiths. Locksmiths are coming, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Well, there's not been any judge in this country who signed a warrant this year I don't know about the past couple of years before, but has ever issued a, a false entry warrant. They don't exist. They have a working possession, possession agreement, which is just a piece of paper. Only. But they will lie and tell you that it, it, it gives them power to do whatever they like. Well, in, in their little bubble, yeah. In, in the real world, they've got no power whatsoever unless you give them that power. But all, all they're trying to do is they're trying to manufacture your consent That's in right. some way. Manufacture it, yeah. So that wasn't the door. Yeah, so if you consent, you end up contracting with them, you say. But to get, to get walking possession, don't you have originally have to have let them in? No. It's changed, I think the last change, it's called a walking possession agreement, so I think you come and take the votes. But yeah, 
if you let them in, then they lever your goods. But if you never ever let them in in the first place, well, no, because they can't. How can they lever anything if they're not yeah. let them in? But, so if you do let them in by accident, which a lot of people do, as you see it all the time, they can walk in and they'll write down and they normally touch stuff which they think they can lever. So what they'll say to you then is they'll give you another piece of paper which is a contract which they don't tell you. Now this piece of paper is called the goods of levy. So they'll write everything down what they, they, they've levied and then they'll say to you, if you sign this, we'll give you a, a plan to pay the money back um, and we will let you keep your stuff. So you end up signing this piece of paper, the levy, and if you default, they can come, then they can come entry and take whatever they've delivered. <coughs> it's all down to you giving your signature. So your signature is your consent. Your consent to contract with them for them to take your stuff off you. That's it, basically. Well, didn't you make a point on that they can't force entry even if you have Well, yeah, but we did, we did, yeah, we did one in Little Hulton. Uh, Mr. Roberts, <laughs> he's quite well known, um, he actually walked into the property, levied the goods, left, set up a payment plan, she didn't stick to the payment plan, then we got on the phone, she come running towards it, we got on the phone and said to him, look, we can't force entry. He said, we're going to force entry, watch. And he gave us a time, gave us a date, didn't it? So that's when we went down and videoed it. So, there again, it's all down to what's lawful and what's not lawful. So you've had Mr Roberts there, cocky as anything, as he's done it many, many times before, and never been challenged. So we, he actually rang the police, I don't think we even no, he rang the police. He actually did one in the van, because there's quite a few of us. Uh, but he did come back with the police, can it wear it's Jim, he's got a bit of balls, you know. He come back with the police and then we said to the police, you need to check their paperwork to see if they've got a wet ink signature from a judge with a, a court crest seal of, you know, for a warrant, as a warrant, as a warrant should look. Um, and on their one, it said Marston's yeah. at the top of the red, so they're printing their own, you know, That's the warrants. Exactly. That's the point. Yeah. So they've printed off their own warrants, obviously. It's fraudulent instruments, as Guy has said many, many times before. Um, and they've got no power whatsoever, so they can't force entry. The only way they can get into your house if you let them in, and that's it. But, the only thing is, they end up now targeting, you put whatever's on your car park, or on your drive, or outside, which is your car. It's the easiest target they can go for. But then again, same again, apparently it's lawful, they can clamp a car, but if you, if you look through the proper laws, nobody's allowed to be clamped on a public highway, mm. or on private property. So everything, all the laws are contradicting themselves, and they're getting away with it. But, if they clamp the car, they're supposed to give you seven days notice before they can come and clock your car. They're supposed to give you seven days notice before they come and knock on your door. But they don't. They just come and catch you off on the hop, <coughs> as they normally do. If anybody clamps your vehicle, it's your property. So I suggest that you get a little grinder and cut it off. Yes, yeah. Right, yeah, cut it off. Get another, get another padlock, padlock it round the gate, put your own notice on it, notice to pay. So they have to, to get their property back, they've got to pay you and do it for the amount what they allegedly, you allegedly owe them, and to, to get their, their clamp back. Now this did work because we had a professional clamp, what they called it, a clamp company. Um, Clampers. <laughs> no, no it's, a big, it's a big firm and all they do is go around clamping people. So we, we rang him up and said, look, if you don't remove that clamp, we're going to cut the clamp off, we're going to stick it to the gate, we're going to put a notice on it, you're going to have to pay the fine uh, before we re release your clamp. Well, I'll tell you what, within 10 minutes, shot straight down there, clamp off, but the vehicle which he clamped didn't have any tax on it and it was on the public highway, so he's ran the DVLA, so he's gone back with the DVLA, but he's removed the clamp because he knew he wanted to get rid of the clamp, so it's not illegal to take a, cl a clamp off your property, but the car got took away, but he made a mistake, <laughs> because when he went to levy the vehicle, he's left the, the levy saying he owns the vehicle. <laughs> so what he's gone and done is he's gone and cast himself up for no time, right? He's gone, gone with the DVLA, he took the car, so when I rang the bailiff and said, look, you've just gone and, you own that car. You and your company own that vehicle, and you've had it removed. So we will be sending the logbook off to DVLA 
to tell them that you've levied the vehicle and you actually own the vehicle. <laughs> and that's it. And he put a phone down. Right. Turn the tables round, turn the tables round, again, back on against them. Mm -hmm. Like guys do it, like everybody else is doing it. Does, it, it, doesn't like the it. it doesn't do anything. Well, DVLA did. Yeah, so why say it wrong? Well, it's a registered keeper, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, but the, the confidence. You've got to, you, you've got to talk sometimes. I mean, I don't like using the word people or persons, but sometimes you have to use them words so anybody else that doesn't know what we know will understand them. Ownership is ownership. Well, it states on the logbook. It states on the logbook that you are not the true owner of the vehicle. You're just the registered keeper. Did you state you own it? Did you report them for having no insurance on the vehicle? So we left it at that. So. Um, as for guys' case with repossessions, they're different. They are a different ball game. They're a different yeah. ball game altogether. But they're all crooks. Yeah. They're all fraud. Yeah. They're all. All the frauds come from the, 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 the centre of the corruption is the courts yeah. and the banking system. Yeah. Well, you, although the, uh, there is a difference between stealing somebody's home. Mm -hmm. And let's say coming to TV, television, because it. it. it's exactly the same. Yeah. But the law, it doesn't. Really, I, I don't believe it differs between the two. I don't think it they, does. They can come and steal if they think it's your property, and they believe they've got a right to take it. They can take it. But uh, now there's a, there's a bailiff coming along just now. I believe he's, he's going to try and take your property just now. ABC, that's another move as well. We've got um, we've got a clamp system up and running now. Uh, it's called the ABC system, which is anti Bailey clamp. <laughs> so what we normally do is we will threaten them and they don't come anywhere near, they won't get out of the van, they won't they won't even stop. Yeah. They won't even entertain it because they will get clamped. So we'll worry about that individual. And we'll, we'll charge them. Um, well, we do videos, don't we? <laughs> well, we've actually got a tow truck. We've got a tow truck and a compound. And I'm not joking. <laughs> I, and I'm not joking. <laughs> yeah. We've got a tow truck. It's, it's all ready to go. 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 We're up and running. We're just waiting for our first victim. Don't go anywhere near us. Don't go away. What is the difference between a court seal and a court stamp? A court stamp is a rubber stamp. Buff. Yeah, the seal is embossed, is it? Raised? A, a real, original court seal. Yeah, it's a proper raised seal. And people need to know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 rather than the ones everybody's seeing, they're all rubber stamps. I, 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 I can probably explain that a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the expert on the crux of that one. I've got some. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so yeah, never give your details, you're not obliged to give anybody your details, if somebody's knocking on your door asking who you are, switch, switch, switch on, you can answer it, but there is another method, I found my, my method is the only right one answer to the, the bailiff, and it's asking for proof of claim, whatever debt they're changing, and they can't answer it, so therefore, you know, give it a heads up, my last letter to the best of us was that if any of the, can you please inform all your employees who are going to visit my property that if I catch any of their employees on my property, I will use force, if necessary, to remove them from my property, as they will be committing trespass. And that's probably why they won't, they won't even come. All they'll do now is send them through the Royal Mail, and it's mail fraud. I just send them back mail fraud. That's right. Mm. So just lose the fear. The main key is lose the fear. Mm. And if more groups can get set up across the country, mm. the better. Because we're not running around all over the country then. People can come together. Mm. You don't need we the likes of the make a phone call. You don't need the likes of the job. And the videos that, that's made educational. Yeah, very educational. And make your own videos as you go along. Yeah. They'll find it overpowering, it's really good. Mm. You know. It is I, I just sit and laugh and watch these videos, it's so funny, it's unbelievable. What, what have you got to say about these um, bailiffs from the High Court saying, it's on the television now? Yeah, that's, that's, propaganda. Propaganda. Yeah. that's propaganda, propaganda. I can't even believe you're watching the TV. Don't pay, we'll take it away. <laughs> I can't even believe you're watching the TV and they don't have fun and pay you the TV licence as well. <laughs> Thank you. But I should say that because I got my TV, BBC TV licence, that's it yesterday.
asking the, has anything changed? Because you were on the phone, Mark. Oh, well, yeah. Um, so, no, we've got no power, we've got no power whatsoever. Oh, we're we're going and and the people. Yeah, but that's, that's for commercial. Yeah. Most of that's commercial. Yeah. The only one that's got to be an issue are to four century are commercial, but even they're, they're telling There's a new one out now, can't pay the ticket away? That's yeah. the one, that's yeah. what he's yeah. talking about. Is it, or are you talking about <laughs> babies? Well, so, you know, show us the coming, aren't you? Are you talking real. about shows yeah. coming off? Yeah. No, there's one on this, can't pay the ticket away. That's it, can't pay the ticket away. Well, they're not commercial, they're keeping it at home. You need to check about the sheriffs as well, because a lot of them state that the sheriffs, but they're mainly private companies. Well, third party interlopers, 99% of the time. What we'll do is, let Wesley give out the information, then ask questions afterwards, because otherwise it gets a bit confused. What's the name of the website? Which website? Whatever your information is on. Got website. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's just really well. uh, we're on Facebook, Beat the Bailiffs and Banks. Don't do Facebook. Thank you. Well, Whoever said that. Before, I do, it, before, I, before I do it properly, okay. I've got to get an actual, a real warrant here, okay? And the name on, on the, the, this warrant, so um, I'm afraid you, your name at this particular moment is um, first, Mr. First, Charles First, okay? So I'm coming up to you and I say, uh, Mr. First, I've got a warrant here. Um, shall we go in and discuss it? What would you say? Shall we go in and discuss it? And yeah. say, no, who are you? Uh, who are you? Well, I'm a bailiff to uh, get this warrant and, and give it to you. And who do you work for? Uh, the show me ID. Uh, I'll show you my warrant. No, I need to see your ID. Um, there's it. <coughs> right, then you get the camera out, da -da, make sure you film everything. Uh, well, I'm going to let you in. That's what I would say. Would you like to see this one? Not really, no. Well, it, it's got all the details. It's got your name, it's signed, and it's actually got a seal on it. I'd, be, I'd wake up in heaven if somebody said it. I'd never have to slap that, was it? This, this warrant. Yeah. Is that enough seals for you? No, we need, we need a proper one with a crest on. <laughs> that is a crest. That's, oh, is it? Uh, yeah. What I've actually got here is a copy of mm -hmm. King Charles I execution warrant. <laughs> is there enough stamps on that? <laughs> <laughs> seals. He's got 59 seals. Wow. And everyone's signature's on there. That's why you don't get your seals, because he's got them all. <laughs> That is a real water well, it's a one. Yeah. And yet they're turning up with nothing yeah. trying to take people's homes and problems. But that was just here for for a bit of amusement. Yeah. Yeah. But that shows you but if, that if, is a problem. If a bailiff does come up with the warrant, just all that warrant again, the best thing to do is to grab it, shut the door, and go and shred it. <laughs> 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 But nowadays they do it. They're showing you them on their mobile phone. Look, this is a warrant. That's right. Yeah. Oh, they normally they normally bend the paper over because because just like that, yeah. Because they've got the uh, who they work for. Clearly put it on there. They turn it over like that. They say that's a warrant, which it's not. But that's why you'll never be able to get a warrant off a uh, railing. Yeah. Well, back off, still hide it, and always in the bag. You can always ask for the deed of assignment as well. Um, you can't prove it because the debtor, if you're in debt, they're supposed to issue you with a deed of assignment so you can find your cause or case. I, I tried to use this one yesterday. Um, this one, I've got a um, collection company. I've not heard of it in years. I assume that it had been crossed for the rest of them. Apparently, it hasn't been. I tried to use that yesterday and it didn't quite, I don't think he got grip, grasps of law and soul. I was trying to explain to him he's a third party into the and that if I owe him money, then there should be a contract between me and himself, not not the whoever I owe it to. Is that am I correct in saying that? Oh well, yeah. Basically, I'll, 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 so it does work, and they are they are going to get back to me with some some sort of reply. Well, I'm Mr. Roberts from Birth Master, I want to uh, seek possession of your property. Possession of your property. Possession of your goods. Season of goods.
really going on, the bailiffs are only there to keep the peace. So you can actually tell the police to get off your land as well because he's trespassing. So that means both of them need to leave and you know, <laughs> 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 Obviously this wasn't planned. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, so yeah, the couple of powers that said, the couple of powers that said, Obviously, he's caught me off the hop. Yeah, yeah, yeah he, he got thrown in the deep end, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's the best way to do it, you? Yeah. <laughs> 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 I wanted to ask you a question. Where's Rick? Oh, no, Rick, you don't have questions. Yeah, okay. I, just, I, I just wanted to ask you a question about uh, the specific detail about the parking ticket warrant. Because I've just, just got one which I'm going to start working on to, to nail them. But I just wanted to, to check the details because I've been on to the, uh, the website of the Traffic Enforcement Centre because that's where all the council tickets enforcement comes from. Isn't it? Now, it actually says on their website that they send a message to the council authorising the council to issue the warrant. So do councils actually issue warrants? Or do they just tell the bailiffs to print them? The, the, the council's print their own mm. everything. Someone's his liability order, yeah. warrants, yeah. the whole shebang. That's not just for parking times, that's council time. That's yeah. anything to do with that. That's right. So, so, when, so, what, so have you actually got any experience of, of when, when the Bristol suitors, for instance, doing a parking ticket? I've not had a parking ticket. Right. To be fair. Because I'm, I'm just wondering. Yeah, parking ticket sounds like twelve months for parking for. Yeah, that's another thing we found out as well. We did some research on the parking ticket. So that's the, if they can't collect the debt after twelve months, yeah, it comes null and void. They can't collect it. Right. Right. But what, what I mean, they can't enforce it. Yeah. Right. What I'm interested in is deconstructing their system so they know that they can't do it. No, no, because I'm, I'm challenging council tax as well. What I've done, I've wrote to the court and I've put private confidential on it. Yeah. And I'm asking for the summons and liability order. And I've, I've stated that I need a judge to sign this document. And it needs to be a signature with a wet ink signature, with a signature that I can recognise yeah. from somebody who works within the court. Mm -hmm. And I give them 14 days no, no notice to write back to me. And I've not heard a thing, that's over a month ago. Mm -hmm. Because I put private confidential because what normally happens is if you write to the court regarding your summons and liability order, the court goes back to the council, then they'll get a reply from the council. Uh -huh. So it's all in house, isn't it? Yeah. So, so you make it private yeah. 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 so yeah. confidential, they're not allowed to do that by the way. No, and because the courts don't hold any records of summonses and liability orders because they don't exist, but, yeah. how can they respond? They can't respond. But they can't, can't. No. This is what we've been doing. They can't Ask respond to it. Wesley, do you know about revoking licences? Do you know about revoking citizenship? Yeah. We're starting to do that. So what, would, um, what the question is going to be linked to you. If you're challenging the Crown and then they revoke your citizenship, <coughs> how, will they how will you challenge that? <laughs> they can have it, I've lost my name. I, I've lost yeah, I know you've lost your name. I've lost the title as Mr. How will you stand for living in England? 
but yeah, but this is nothing to do with it. Yeah. And I'm only being oh. the devil's advocate because they want to do this. They've done it in one country already. I've lost the legal fiction. The legal fiction is gone. I've even put a trademark on the yeah, end of my name. Which gets rid of the legal fiction. Yeah, but we're, we're, we're talking about <laughs> warrants. <laughs> and, yeah. Yeah, 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 let's keep on going. Right, we'll keep on going. Right, we'll keep on going. Speeding tickets, are you up to date on speeding tickets and people being sent to the club? Don't speed. Don't speed. I think, think, there's, a, I think there's a new case law which called mm. into effect this year from Wales mm. where somebody had actually filled in all the documentation, sent it back to TVLA or the court, and he didn't sign it, and it, the case got thrown out. And that's a, 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 a case what's been set president, I think, yeah, while yeah. speeding. My friend got a speeding ticket coming off the M62 in Liverpool. He weren't aware he was speeding it. He's not a speeder. A few months later, this was back in 2009, he got a speeding ticket. I told him to go to court and he was going to get so many points on his license unless he attended this Learn to Drive Slowly class or something similar. So he wrote back, yeah, he was going to drive a tennis class. But it was in Bristol and the guy's in Norwich and he was unemployed. He couldn't afford to pay the 200 quid. So everything got left and then all of a sudden, a few months ago, he's driving to Norwich. He's just got a new second hand car. He's got his insurance to cover it. The police swoop down on him, telling him he hasn't got a license. They whack his car into the pan. And it cost him three or four hundred quid to get out. And now he's got to go on and see a driving course that he's got to pay for in Bristol and he can't get there. But that's because he put it in his name. Yeah. Yeah. Do we use your name? Do we do anything? Lose the name. That's it. He's Tom's name. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, I mean, a lot of people say. We're, we're all Tom Crawford. <laughs> <laughs> Except me. <laughs> I'm so my wife. You can have to put your car into a trust. You can put a lot more of things into a trust, so. Yeah. No. This, this fairparking.co.uk where if you pay them £12 a year you can register it at their address so any tickets like that they will forward on to you and it's up to you how you deal with them but when the bailiffs, if the bailiffs get into it they have to go to his address and he'll say he has no idea where you live. <laughs> <laughs> it's worth, worth a go. I've got one of those discs on my car, you know, tell you not to. Yeah, I got two tickets in one day the other day. Well, they do work and sometimes they don't. They don't. <laughs> that's, that's your choice. Yeah. You're, you're, you know. But I did put up the first one on the video and it was quite funny. To be fair, I've had, I've had one ticket and that was from parking in Sainsbury's and I did have the, um, the notice on the windscreen. But I've just kept it, still got it today. It was last year, wasn't it? And I've not heard a thing. Private parking makes a difference on private parking. Exactly, yeah. Council, yeah. Council, the yeah, point is, is that yeah. you will park in the same the room at any supermarket yeah. or, or McDonald's or a train station. <laughs> the land belongs to the supermarket, train station, McDonald's, whoever. They use a private company to come along and say, you've been here more than two hours. It's the same with um, motorway service stations. Mm. They give you a ticket, basically all you do is just say, put it in the bin, ignore yeah. them. Anything they say, ignore them. That ticket. Because they do not have... Thanks, right Anita. So, if the cameras aren't working properly, where does that leave all the other penalty charges that Met Parking have issued to McDonald customers? With me now is Tim Carey, a solicitor specialising in traffic law. Tim, um, not many people have trackers in their cars. No, that's right. So, irrespective of whether the cameras are working or not, what view do you take on these penalty charges? Well, frankly, I'm surprised at the, the volume of these penalty charges that are being issued. People don't have to deal with them. People don't have to answer them because they're not, they're not, it's not a criminal offence uh, not to answer these. If, the, if you get something from the police, you have to answer it, but not from a parking company. OK, but people are worried about being taken to court. Is, what are their chances if they're taken to court? It's up to the parking company to prove the driver, and they have to sue the driver, not the owner, not the registered keeper. They have to sue the driver and they have to prove that the driver was in breach of some contractual term. Will they do that? Well, I, I, I don't know of any cases where they've done it. I, okay. I would think it would be incredibly difficult for them to mount a case before a county court. And the other worry when debt collectors get involved that people's credit rating is going to be marked down complete nonsense complete okay. nonsense the only way you're going to have your credit rating damaged is if there's a county court judgment against you which is registered so you really so i mean when people get this it does actually look like an official 
penalty charge, oh, it looks, isn't it? Looks the yellow and the... Looks yeah. very impressive. What should they do if they get one well, of these? Well, if my mum got one, yeah. I would tell my mum to take it yes. and to make one of these with it. Yeah. And once she's made one of these with it, I would suggest she sees how good it is by doing that with it. Perfect. Thank you Brilliant. very much. Thank too. you. Brilliant legal advice. Well, we invited both McDonald's and Met Parking to appear on the programme to discuss our findings, but for the second time they declined. McDonald's tell us that the parking uh, review they promised last week is underway. And they can't themselves take you to court. Some, the of, the some of them do it for them. Yeah, the ticket they give you is based on an adhesive contract. Yeah. Right? The adhesive contract is what you see on the wall, yeah? Yeah. What, what we've done, okay, is um, every time we get a vehicle, we buy a vehicle, we insure it, we go through the whole process, and then I immediately get 12 months insurance and, and 12 months tax, and that's changed now. And then what we, what we, do, we were doing was I would sell the vehicle then to Cheeky Monkeys. Now, Cheeky Monkeys is just a name. It's not even a limited company. And Cheeky Monkeys would then I'd fill the forms out, don't put limited, and send it off. You can still drive it because you're insured to drive that vehicle on your insurance. But any speeding tickets, any parking tickets, go to Cheeky Monkeys. And in the end, it got to the point where the police were sending uh, uh, summonses to Bodman Manor for Cheeky Monkeys Limited. Well, of course, that's the only thing they could deal with. So I was saying, well, I've checked with Dunham Bradstreet and that there's no company registered as Cheeky Monkeys Limited. Who are you talking to? Who are these Cheeky Monkeys? Who are these Cheeky Monkeys? Do I look like the little stories, actually, you know? But I mean, ultimately, it's just, look, it's just a, it's a, it's a game with, with, with that situation. And you can be insured to drive your friend's vehicles, yeah? So you can, you can get away from that sort of situation by getting rid of the name, really. Someone else's name that isn't actually a limited company. I get those are parking tickets. When we show it to the drivers, I agree with what you say. But the point that we're trying to make is when it's private land, it belongs to a supermarket or a train station, etc., etc. They employ a third party, like a bailiff, if you like, to give out tickets if you overstay their two-hour maximum. And they tell you you've entered into a contract with them, which you clearly haven't. But the only people who could take you to court would be Sainsbury's or Tesco, whoever owned the land. They will threaten you and say take you to court if you don't pay this, or we will come and take your car, we will do all this, that and the other. The point is that this has been proved time and time and time again in court. When somebody goes to court, they say, do you own that land? No. Then you can't enforce on that land, because only the owners of that land can. And the owner's not going to give you, once again, a deed of assignment, mm -hmm. because they're giving away property they own. Yeah. Yeah. So it's been proved time and time again, and it's also been in the mainstream media, so a lot of people are starting to believe it, because it's been on the silly box. <laughs> and it's been in the fear-monger rags, like, you know, the, be scared of all of this. But they'll always give some, some little caveat at the bottom that'll say, this has happened for, since 2010, but the rules have changed now. They yeah. haven't. Yeah. If you don't own land, you cannot enforce mm. anything on that land. Oh, yeah. That's why they changed the clamping um, on uh, private land in 2012. They said that private bailiff companies can no longer, or clamping companies can no longer clamp on private land because they don't own the land. Yeah. You can employ anybody to do anything. But the person you employ better be aware of what they're doing. Brilliant. And that's where it goes. Yeah. Thanks, Andrew. Anyway, we're good. Yeah. Can I please ask about implied right? No, I don't want to ask about that. Okay. Third party interlopers. <laughs> what? Third party interlopers. Yeah. Have they always interlopers are interlopers again? <laughs> <laughs> Have they always bought the debt? Do they own the debt? No, no, it varies. It varies on different companies, different yeah. policies. Council tax, I don't, I don't think the, the bailiffs uh, pay for the debt. I think no. they're on commission. I found out, <coughs> after speaking to this company that was after me yesterday, that it's in research, and they do, when they purchase the debt, they get it for something like 6% of what it's worth. Uh, they refused point blank yesterday to, to, to tell me how much they would, they purchased my, desk, my debt for. Mm -hmm. Because if they did that, I feel like I could turn around and say, well, I'll give you six quid, it's all gone then. Yeah. Yeah. So what you paid for it. So I think some bailiff some, 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 some companies, and to do pay for certain percentage in the pound to, to, to buy your debt. But third party, third party debts are unenforceable in law. Yeah. Mm. So, so if, if, if you were worth me a thousand pounds, and I was silly enough to give them the thousand pounds and said, don't worry, I'll get the money off you. Yeah? 
you could say, well, we're off. I didn't, I, we didn't come to no contract. No contract. Yeah. 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 But, but if they don't own that, if you don't own that firm, if you don't take it on, or having bought it... Then they're acting as agents. Yeah. yeah. So they're still... They're so still well, breaking the law. It, it's only plausible. Okay. 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 They're, they're still going for whichever way they go. One other thing to remember on that as well, just, just in case most people know this, but one other thing to remember is that in law, a bill can only ever be paid once. Yeah. So if I owed you £10 and I paid you £10, not in six months, you're not going to come and say, you owe me another £10. It's the same with any debt or alleged debt. So if a bailiff company pays, and it might only be a pound, and you owed a £1,000 to the original creditor, in paying that pound, because the bank and me, as the, as the bailiff company, if you like, agree that that's what it's worth, that debt has then been paid, and the law states that debt can only be paid once. So if I then come to you and ask you for money, I'm actually breaking about five laws. <laughs> Harassment, data protection, fraud, just to name a few. Because I'm asking for use for something that no longer exists. <laughs> I'm asking you for money that you don't owe anybody anymore because I paid it. All you owe me is a thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, once again. Oh. <laughs> How do you know oh, no. a sheriff? <laughs> You're not getting away. Right That's what, sorry? A sheriff <clears throat> is. I mean, what is. A goddamn sheriff, apart from him in Nottingham. Well, originally, a, a sheriff was a peacekeeper many moons ago, mm -hmm. and then they've been promoted into uh, this asset grabbing. Mm -hmm. Have um, you got any rights? Sheriffs, the, the, the more commercial. The like one. The more commercial. You'll never you'll never come in contact with a sheriff unless they get sent in to be Yeah. That's why they can be involved. Because I understand it, originally the sheriffs were appointed by the, the king or the queen yeah. to collect on their debts. And so they were commanded to get the king or the queen's money out of the debtor. But, but recently, the, the powers have so-called been devolved onto the, the High Court Enforcement Officers, so-called, uh, a, a, a bunch of private companies. So they claim that they're sheriff's officers, but actually they're not really, are they? Yeah, yeah. 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 It's the um, sheriff's of Shire Reefs, that's what it was all about, yeah. isn't it, yeah? And what they've actually done is they've tried to statutorise something, and if you... If you statutorise it, then all of a sudden it's a bit like contempt of court. Contempt of court is wholly the creature of common law, right? And you can check that out and get it. So that's why you can never be done for it. If you know, I, I, I'd suggest everyone go to FMOTL, get contempt of court down, read that document that myself and Veronica worked on for a long time. Yeah. I've used it, it's correct. Well, it's correct. I wouldn't tell you it's correct if it's not correct. It's correct. You won't be done for contempt of court. But ultimately, there is contempt of court in statute. Yeah, it's all yeah. But I mean, it, it, it means nothing. If you don't consent, consent it for meaning, yeah, yeah. If you don't want to consent to it, right. you, you can be done for contempt of court in common law every time. But you can't be done for contempt of court in statute if you, if, you know, if you know the game. So I mean, right. I don't know. okay then. Well, big hand for uh, for. Uh, <laughs>